in this lecture optical phenomena or photoelectric effect, right? So first of all, you need to know the definition, what, what is photoelectric effect? Is another recall question where you're going to get two marks. So it is the process whereby electrons are ejected from a metal surface when light of suitable frequency is instant on that surface. So this one tells you that not all light is going to emit electrons, but light of a suitable frequency, right? And the photoelectric effect demonstrates the particle nature of light. Remember, we, all, we already know that light is a wave, but photoelectric effect gives proof that light also behaves like a particle. So what actually happens here, we have light rays of suitable frequency falling onto the metal surface. And if the frequency is high enough, we are going to have electrons being emitted from the metal surface. And these, those electrons that are removed are called photoelectrons. And when they start moving, they will constitute what we call photocurrent, right? So the amount of energy in the photon is directly proportional to the frequency of the light and inversely proportional to the wavelength of the light shown there. And um, just a recap, we already know from grade 10, when we're looking at the energy of a photon, we said E is equal to HF, right? Where A is, e is the energy of, uh, let me write it again. Where E is the energy of a photon and H is Planck constant and F is the frequency. So you can see that here E is uh, directly proportional to F. And we can also write, remember, from the wave equation of light C, which is the speed of light is equal to the wavelength and the frequency. And we can see that the frequency, if we make it the the formula, it will be C over lambda, right? So which means this equation here, in terms of uh, uh, the wavelength as well, we can write it as E is equal to H c over lambda so so from this equation we can now see that e is inversely proportional to one over lambda okay so this is energy of the photon in terms of the wavelength and the energy of the photon in terms of uh, the frequency right so it depends on the problem whether they've given you the frequency or the wavelength then you can use the equation the appropriate equation based on that, all right. So those are the equations that I was writing for you and I showed you how we can move from that equation to that equation, all right? H is Planck's constant is given and the table of constants at the back is 6.63 .6 times 10 to the power negative 34 joules per second and C is the speed of light, which is equal to three times eight to the three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. It's also given at the back in your table of constants. So increasing the intensity or brightness of the light, we increase the number of photons uh, emitted, but not the energy. So what we will in the, the number of electrons rather not the photons. So when you are increasing your frequency, what you are actually intensity, what you, you are doing is you are having more photons. You are having more photons here falling, falling onto your metal surface. That is that is what happens when you increase the intensity. So just take it to say if uh, I increase the number of photons, it means um, I am also going, each photon is going to knock off an electron. So if I increase the number of photons falling onto the metal, I also have more photo electrons being emitted. So provided the frequency is higher than the threshold frequency, which we are going to look at in the next the next slide there. Okay. Right. So the mi minimum energy that an electron in a metal needs 
to be emitted from the metal surface is called the wake function because its energy is going to be measured measured in joules right and the wake function is radius w naught is equal to h f naught where f naught is your threshold frequency right and what is threshold frequency it is the minimum frequency of the incident photon that is required to emit a photoelectron from the metal surface. And it's rate as F, F naught. And it's measured in hertz because it's frequency, right? So let me just uh, write it here. So UW naught, this one is in, in, in joules, right? Because it's energy. And this one is in, in hertz because it's frequency. Right, and this is Planck's constant, right? So that is the relationship between the the threshold frequency, the threshold frequency, and the wave function, right? So let me just clear that. And now, the energy of the photon can be calculated using the wave function and the um, kinetic energy of the photon. And usually, uh, what makes sense to us is the EK max or maximum kinetic energy of the energy of the electrons emitted. So this is uh, what we call the photoelectric equation. E is equal to W naught plus EK max. We are interested in the maximum kinetic energy of the ele ele electrons that are emitted. And remember what we said, we said E is equal to HF, the, the energy of the photon. So in terms of frequency, it will be HF is equal to HF naught. That's half. Remember, EK is half MV squared. So EK max is half MV max squared. And the, the formula will be given. This formula will be given at the back, so there's no need to panic. And then you can now remember E is equal to HF in terms of frequency. Right. So <clears throat> when a graph is given, the formula should be related to the equation. Like here, you see they plotted frequency here and EK max on the other side. So what you need to do is you need to look at your equation and adjust it so that it's uh, in the form of Y is equal to MX plus C. So since there is frequency, here, we are saying HF, right? It is equal to HF naught uh, plus E K max, okay. But they put it uh, this one versus that, okay. So I can uh, I can just uh, rearrange here and put E K max there. Yeah, uh, plus H F not. Right. Since there is frequency, I want my equation to start with. F, so R will divide by H, everyone, all right? And if I do that, you will see that the equation comes to F is equal to one over H, E K max, uh, plus F naught, can be the plus F naught, because those H's will cancel, Right, plus F naught, right. So I now compare this because this is on the Y axis, I compare to Y is equal to M X uh, plus C. So this will tell me that the gradient is one over H, which is one over Planck's constant. And where it crosses the, the, and the, uh, the Y axis is my F naught for that particular method. Right, so this is how you can convert any equation for linear form. The one given there is your y, and the one given there is your x, and you rearrange your equation so that it's in that form, okay. So this is what I did then and showed you that it comes there, I did it slowly, and now you start with one over h, a e k max plus f naught, and then you will see that the gradient is one over h, and f naught is the threshold frequency, which is your y intercept, right? 
So, <clears throat> so when, they, when you're given n percent, look at what is given on the y-axis, what is given on the x-axis, look at your equation, I readjust so that whatever is on the y is the subject formula, right? Another concept you need to know is that of an atomic emission spectrum is formed when certain frequencies of electromagnetic radiation are emitted due to an atom making a transition from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. Okay, let's say if we have, let's use a gas. If you've got a gas and you give the gas, the electrons in the gas, some of them become excited. So they absorb energy, they go to higher energy levels, but when they go to higher energy levels, they're not stable. So what they are going to do is they're going to fall, to fall back to ground state. As they do so, they lose energy uh, in form of air, light, and then that gives rise to what we call atomic emission spectrum, right? <laughs> and like they you've got your workers, and if you look at the emission spectrum, that is what you are going to see. You're going to see something, something like that, right? Then I, an atomic absorption spectrum is formed now when certain frequencies of the electromagnetic radiation passing through a substance um, are absorbed, right? And it happens when now you've got light passing through a coal gas and you, some of the, the frequencies will be absorbed, right? And will be missing, okay? And we are going to use this question just to try and understand what's happening here. An experiment, an experiment is conducted to investigate the relationship between the frequency of uh, incident light on the metal and the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons from the metal, from the surface of the metal. This uh, experiment is conducted for three different metals, right? So, so now you see on that side now, they've given you maximum kinetic energy, right? And they've plotted it against what? Against frequency. So <clears throat> what you need to know now is remember what we said, uh, the, the, the photoelectric equation is equal to E is equal to H. F not plus E K max, okay. E K max. But now they put it uh, F A, so I would rather say H F is equal to H F not plus E K max. Now I want to make E K max the subject formula because it's on the y axis. So I'll write EK max is equal to, it means this guy is going to go to that side and is going to be subtracted. It will be HF minus HF naught. So they plotted EK max versus F. So this is now in the form of Y is equal to MX uh, plus C. And this one, Usual HF not remember we said it's equal to what? A W not, which is the wave function, right? So, so we can now see that the gradient of this EK max versus F will be uh, equal to Planck's constant and the Y intercept. So C will be equal to minus W not of any one of the three metals that we're dealing with now. Yeah, okay. So this is the analysis of the graph. You make y the subject for the, the, the value that is on the y axis, the subject the formula, and then you readjust your equation. We call it linear conversion. And then you can now start analyzing the question. Say, okay. So let's see now. <laughs> so they said, name the phenomena on which this experiment is based on. Right. We know all know it's photoelectric effect. Name the physical quantity represented by x, where is minus x. We said we saw when we did the equation, conversion to linear form, we saw that it's give, it gives us what? 
the work, the work function. Okay, so let's look at the answers. Photoelectric effect, yes, 10.1, 10.2 physical quantity represented by X on the graph. And we said it's uh, the work function. For, for X, it's potassium, right? And then which one of the three metals needs uh, incident light with the greatest frequency? Now you're looking at your F naught. Your F naught is when the kinetic energy is equal to zero. So you're comparing the values there, and you'll see that they say which one of the three metals needs light with the largest wavelength. If the wavelength is largest, it means the frequency should be smallest, is it? So because we, we know that uh, if you are lost, remember we say we're talking of light, we say C is equal to lambda F. So, so lambda is equal to C over F. And remember, this one is fixed, it's constant. So they're looking for the largest. So if this one needs to be large, so it means the frequency has to be small. Okay, because if the frequency is big, we'll get a smaller number. So for the largest frequency wavelength, we need the, the, the smallest frequency. Okay, that's how we arrived at that answer there. And then next, they say you give a reason for your answer. It is the lowest weak wave, wave function, or it is the lowest threshold frequency from the calculation that I have shown, or it is at the highest threshold frequency wavelength. Okay. Then 10.4 define the 10 wave function in waves. And I need to say this is one of the questions that you can actually be asked to recall questions. Uh, I've seen in most of the years, they ask two definitions in this one. They can ask you threshold frequency. They can ask you um, wake function. And remember, there are some certain ways that we need to see the underlying words there. Uh, the wake function of metal is the minimum energy that in, an electron in the metal needs to be emitted from the metal from a certain metal surface, right? So there are those uh, ways that are underlined that you need definitely to include in your definition, right? And remember, you are not being asked to, to say your opinion you should stick to the guideline, right? 10.5 says calculate the weight function of platinum. So we are looking at this and we, we, we are based on this one. We are going to consider this graph for platinum, right? So, is three, uh, uh, we look at this, um, we need to understand what is happening on the graduations there. So this is uh, between uh, 1.5 mm -hmm. and two. So this should be uh, 1.75 times, don't forget this, I'm staying to the power of 15 because it's given there, right? So let's see. Right, so like I said, it's 1.75 times 10 to the power of 15. You can see it's being uh, underlined the AW naught is equal to HF naught. H, H, you get it from your table of functions, uh, of constants, and that one you read from the graph, and you get your answer. All right, I like that. Or you could have uh, gone all the way, but it wasn't necessary to write the whole photoelectric equation. All right, 10. 10.5 and two frequency of the incident light that will emit electrons from the surface of platinum with the maximum velocity. So what you are given there is the maximum velocity, right? So you use it to find your EK max. So you see here, you change your EK max to half MV max when because you are given the maximum velocity. And remember, we're dealing with electron. So the M is the mass of the electron, which again, you get it, you get from the, from the table of constant. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for, for the frequency. So we say HF is good, HF naught plus half MV squared, right? 
we substitute to what we know. And you see, again, you see, you get one mark here, one mark for substitution day, one mark for substitution day. You already have more than half of the marks that you need for this particular question. And all you need to remember is that you are dealing with electrons. So you look for the mass of the electron at the back, uh, which is 9.11 times 10 to the power negative 31. And don't forget to square your V according to the equation there, and then you get your frequency. You should be able, you should be like familiar with the standard form. And this is one of the questions, 13 to 15 marks, and it's easy to, to get this, all right? You can also visit that website to get more videos. Good luck, have a nice day.